So you, I know you'll, you'll yeah, you'll appreciate this. The kids that uh, just went by on the bikes just yeah. reminded me like how great would it be to be a kid, twelve years old, growing up in Southern California, like I know. there's something riding around on electric scooters and stuff. Something magical about California. I, I, I you know, there, there's some wild things going on. We'll actually talk about a little bit tonight with some of the banking stuff, but. I probably told you before, but my dream school for college was UCLA. I thought that would be like really the greatest place to go in the world. And, and it was because I was such a basketball nut. I watched basketball, UCLA basketball. That was probably my connection. Right, the fact right. that, you know, all the women look gorgeous <laughs> And the sunshine, three hundred. Well, that was the days of Baywatch. Like I was telling my boys, like, yeah, there was a show oh that was on TV. It was like the, it still is like the one of the number one uh, TV shows in the world. You know, Baywatch. When, when people yeah. don't understand, or my son doesn't understand, because I saw UCLA in the U.S. Open the other day, is that, you know, that was like a pipe dream. I mean, you know, air. It's not like we jumped on airplanes ever. You know, right. we barely went out to yeah. dinner as a family. So getting back and forth from UCLA back in the uh, you know yeah, late eighties, that happen. wasn't going to happen. So I I had that's funny. You're watching sports. I'm watching the uh, internet and like catching catching some of these reports that were coming from the guys that graduated from Stanford. They they uh, created Google. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, I was I was always interested like. Southern California, wow, what it would be like to go to Stanford or someplace like that, because all yeah. the tech stuff was was so big back there. I mean, I was early 90s, late 80s, kind of. Uh, the first time I went to California, I was a senior in college. My roommate's parents moved from Florida to California. They said, come on out. And we came out with three of us, and we just we went from L.A. to Vegas to San Diego, and it was like a whole new world, man. It right. was sunshine mountains desert oh we had such a great time right yeah where are you exactly uh i can look down the street and see the top of the sand on uh on huntington beach nice yeah so like a couple blocks up just so like middle your, of residential when is Airbnb. your son's competition when did they uh he got done that's part of the reason we're out here he got done with his uh nationals week and a half ago now okay so he's done he got a uh, ninth fastest boat in the in the country oh so you're this is vacation yeah this is this is oh, just I, like, thought, I thought you were out there for one of his competitions yeah no this was uh this was my older son graduated high school and he said can we go surfing someplace and <laughs> nice. it was either costa rica or southern california we decided let's go ahead and try to try to come here oh that's great yeah. Hey, uh, looks like we, we are live here. So uh, let me kind of come It's back official. Here. Yep. Official. Hey, Gloria. Thank you. Oh, you attended uh, Loma Linda University. Skied in the morning and swam in the afternoon. Good for you, Gloria. Where is Loma Linda exactly? You don't mind me asking. Um, Alex. Hey, Alex. Good to see you. Thanks for piping in. If you're joining us tonight and you want to say hello in the comment section, feel free to click on that. Also, too, as we uh, as we go through uh, different ideas and um, scenarios tonight, if you want to make a comment, something you've experienced, listen, these RIA meetings are always better if uh, you guys uh, kind of chime in and ask questions or comments. One of the greatest benefits of Washington RIA is we have a very active group all around DC. So it's great to, um, it's great to chime in and see what you guys are up to. First thing I want to do is we kind of come on in here tonight. Let me adjust this a little bit here. All right. Uh, first thing I want to do is we come, uh, to Washington Rhea here, June, um, midsummer. It's just, thank everyone for, um, coming out to our live event. Um, our live event was held uh, Saturday. We met for a couple hours at a property. I think we'll have a few, few pictures of that kind of coming through the, the screen here now and then, but want to thank everyone, everyone for that. The team of 23 is alive and well, uh, everyone is, um, is working toward their, their goals here in the next six months. Um, Saturday, we had a, a great discussion on debt, um, and, uh, buying debt by performing debt, buying non-performing debt. We talked about renovation. Uh, we highlighted a wholesale deal. Um, and we also, um, did some great uh, networking. That's the house that we are out. This is a, a house that uh, that's the back of it, actually. So we had, uh, you know, our 23 members out there. 
and uh, we had a great, great time, really good um, time and discussion and time to uh, network. By the way, if you are interested in the team of 23, we are full. We are full, but we do take uh, kind of, if you will, reservations, um, kind of getting ready as as uh, if you're interested in that, we can tell you more about it. So don't be shy. You can text or email us and let us know that you're interested in the team of 23. Really powerful concept of a small group really focused on their goals and using that group, using that network to help everyone achieve that goal that they might they might have. So we've had a, a real good time with that. Um, tonight, tonight, Justin, as you see, or maybe as you saw, was out in uh, California uh, on vacation with his family. And um, as we talked about different subjects for tonight's RIA, you know, I keep circling back. I keep circling back. And I've, I've talked about this a few times in the last 12 months as I went through my notes and and uh, and my computer. We're talking a little bit more tonight about money. And why are we doing that? Well, if you've listened to me over time, you know that there's two things that are really, really important in the real estate investment business. I don't care if you're a wholesaler, if you're a buy, renovate and sell person, if you are looking for long-term rentals, if you're into multifamily, if you're into commercial, if you're a real estate agent, if you're a mortgage loan officer, doesn't matter. Whatever part of the mortgage or I'm sorry, the real estate business you're in, two things always scream at me. It's generating leads and deals, right? No matter what kind of deal you're looking for. And also capital. Capital is a small business owner. Capital is a real estate investor. We're constantly on the search for that. But a few things are happening and you guys are, are hopefully following this. Um, but things are happening. And, and Justin tells me this a number of times and he's right uh, quite a bit um, when he says that everything starts out in California and drifts to the east. And a few things happened, a few shockwaves, if you will, through the real estate market happened in the past two weeks. I want to highlight and then circle back and talk about talk about uh, money a little bit tonight. Uh, again, availability of capital, having the ability to put your hands on stuff when good deals come about. And I think more and more good deals are going to be popping up as we speak. The two shockwaves in California happened in the past two weeks. Number one, um, Hilton Hotels owned a largest, one of the largest hotels in downtown San Francisco is by somewhere called Union Market. I'm intimately familiar with the Hilton Hotel in downtown San Francisco. I had a buddy, actually my wife, Brenda's roommate, Carla, married somebody that worked for Hilton and he was a head of housekeeping. Now this was maybe 15, 15, 17 years ago. This been, it's been a while, but as head of housekeeping at the Hilton in downtown San Francisco, he had the ability and the option to live actually in the hotel. They had an apartment like on the 12th or 15th floor and they decided to stay, live in that apartment. And it was great for us. Great benefit. They'd invite us to come out. They would send a limousine to the airport. We would get in a limo with the kids. We'd go back to the uh, downtown Hilton Hotel. Uh, and it was it was beautiful. They put us up in a two-level suite overlooking the city. Um, the kids wrote a room service, uh, roof, rooftop pool, the whole deal. And then you come out of the come out of the hotel and there'd be something called Union Market right there, very much of a tourist trend. Uh, tourist area of San Francisco. And then the other thing that happened in the union market, in that general area, Westfield, Westfield uh, handed back to the bank, this massive mall, Nordstrom's exited, other companies were exiting. So they literally gave back in, in case of the Hilton hotel, $725 million loan back to the bank. Here it is. We're done. Uh, same with Westfield's about, I think it's about a $350 million loan back to the bank. Now, again, a small real estate investors, I don't know about you, but I can't even imagine that. Um, there's been times, believe me, oh, there's been times that I'd love to pick up the phone and say, Mr. Banker, I'm out. I'm out. Here's his property back. And uh, and I go on my merry way. Unfortunately, the small investors, we can't do that as much. There's an old adage that says, let me see if I can get it right. If you owe uh, your banker $5,000 and you don't have it, you stay up at night staring at the ceiling going, how am I going to pay it back? If you owe your banker $500 million, it's the banker that's staying up at night looking at the ceiling going, oh my gosh, what am I going to do with this $500 million? So um, very, very interesting what's going on in, in the city of San Francisco and other cities across the country. Now, some of it is blamed. Again, you can make your own opinions. They do blame some of it on the transition from the pandemic to the work life of people, the work habits. People aren't going into the central business districts. We're having that here in Washington, D.C. Some of it in San Francisco. And again, this is not a political show. 
depends where you fall on the spectrum, but there's been a lot of homelessness and a lot of crime in that city. And, um, and you know, some of these businesses just can't make it. So it's a fascinating to watch. Now on the flip side, there's funds that are being put together. This is where kind of we come in, not San Francisco directly, but there's money being aggregated right now to take advantage of some of this carnage that you're going to have in these central business districts across the country. There is one in particular that put together that that's bullish on San Francisco. They're looking for opportunities. I think um, um, I was talking, I believe to Justin, and he was talking about a particular piece of property that was recently bought for 40%, 80%. Okay. Less than what the previous owner bought the, bought the building for. Now what they will do with that building now, who knows, but there are people that are looking for opportunity and that shifts to us. There are things happening, folks. It's very, very confusing. And I think it's confusing mainly uh, because uh, we went through something none of us have gone through. Um, you know, the business leaders today have never gone through a pandemic and literally shutting down the world for X amount of time and shutting down different parts of this country for X amount of time. And then the amount of money that was flooded into the real estate into the economy, excuse me, into the economy. And then how all this is going to play out. People have opinions, man. You can get opinions all through the internet today. As I was reading through some things, I saw that an a Zillow executive say, uh, flipping houses is dead. You can't make, you can't do that anymore. You can do this, 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 this. Now, again, it could be a, a advertisement for doing other parts of real estate investment business, but you know, she came out and said, well, you can't flip homes anymore totally false. Then on the flip side, you had uh, someone said that the housing, the massive housing shortage, housing is going to go up. So if you spend time searching the internet, you certainly can find differing opinions on what's going on in the economy. So you have to look at your own economy. You have to look at what you're seeing in and out there. You have to be talking to realtors and mortgage brokers and, and, and other investors and landlords and finding out, okay, I'm investing in the Woodbridge Dale city. I see a Russell Burden online, or I know, I think Russell invests up in Pittsburgh. What's happening in my little economy. What's happening in my world. And that's what I try to do with, with trying to take a look at what's happening broader so we can be somewhat prepared. It's hard. It's hard in this business to be prepared, man. I wish I had a hundred million dollar fund right now. I'd be out probably buying certain, certain uh, assets right and left. Um, but we can do this on a on, on a different scale. We can be aware of what's going on and we can get prepared. And that's why I circle back to this subject. And I really want to pound it in. If you've heard this, now I know Russell Burden, for example, I see Russell on comment section. I know Russell has heard this probably as many or more times uh, than I've spoken about it. Certainly, he's probably heard it thousands of times. Um, and, and if you're listening tonight, if you're tuning in or you see the recording and you've never heard any of this, you never heard any talk about how to put together capital, how to buy real estate with no money down. This is all new and foreign to you. So maybe it'll be a little bit more exciting. But for those of you that have heard it, let's take advantage of this upcoming market and what's going to be happening, you know, and, and how we can profit from this. And some of it revolves around finding deals and certainly raising capital. Again, if you have comments, um, you know, let us uh, let us know here tonight. So I really want to focus in on uh, on two things. You know, there is a lot of different ways, dozens of ways. We could spend hours and hours talking about different ways to buy real estate with no money down. And we could take one of these and we could split it up and we could do different scenarios. And we could talk through it. But I think what's happening in today's market is fascinating. Let me give you a personal story and then I'll dive into this. I have been working on, and it's been tough, with the developer, a property in, in Baltimore, in an area where, man, the amount of capital flooding this area is incredible. Really kind of backed by the University of, Medi uh, University of Maryland medical community, building $50 million buildings, putting in 80 to 125, $150,000 white collar jobs, good, solid jobs. Um, and I had worked on this property with another person. They couldn't do what they needed to do. Long story short, I, I owned the property and I brought in a developer and together we developed this property. Pandemic hit. Baltimore City changed a lot of, let's say, procedures and requirements on properties. Um, and we've kind of walked through that uh, and it's been painful. Um, this is not uh, what some people in the commercial real estate world say is a big project. It is um, little bit bigger than buying and flipping a single family home, but it's a mixed use 
building. It's about 7,000 square feet. And it is um, a, a commercial unit downstairs and then four units ab above that and unit all brick and everything in the building has been touched, if you will. Everything's been updated and redone and, and, and we're at the point now where we can rent the building and um, eventually we can subdivide it. We're, we've already done that process and we can make these condos and sell these off and, and so forth and so on. Um, one of our lenders, um, Baltimore Community Lending, their charter is literally to provide capital for people to upgrade and update properties in Baltimore City and to revitalize areas and neighborhoods. And their headquarters is literally right around the corner from this property. They know this property. They can look out their window and see this property. They have seen this work. They've seen the capital put into this project. They've seen our setbacks, but the ability to keep, keep going and moving forward and finishing the project. Um, but something's happened that's interesting. And, and I credit this um, observation to actually one of our team of 23 members, Charlie. Charlie's a hard money lender. And I'm not sure if Charlie's on tonight or not, but he was saying that one of the things their company is doing is they're reaching out to midsize and, and different types of banks and talking to them, them about, um, you know, buying possibly some of their performing and or non-performing residential loans and or commercial, um, but really kind of as a target market because he believes and that some of these banks are going to be hurting and they need to raise capital and raising capital for the banks has gotten even a little bit tougher, right? It's more expensive. And they're trying to kind of look out in the future, two, three, four years down the road and getting prepared for all this because something interesting happened with this deal. Um, we were told uh, that um, once we finished the renovation, that this loan could be once we had it rented, performing, meaning generating some income, that they would refinance or they would, um, that's not really the right word, but they would re redo, lack of a better word, redo the loan into a longer term holding loan, maybe a five to seven, maybe even a 10 year loan. So again, we finish construction, we then convert that loan. Now again, interest rates go up and down. It would have been certainly higher than if this happened a year and a half, two years ago. Um, I'm reading this as we uh, as we said. That's great, Russell. I have to talk to you that uh, about about that. Um, if you can throw that up, um, we'll, we'll we'll talk about that. Um, anyways, the 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 down and dirty is they announced to us, myself and the developer, that hey, we're not going to refinance this loan. We want our money. I'm like, hey, what happened to that charter that you're supposed to be revitalizing neighborhoods and stabilizing communities? Well, they had a change of leadership and. Uh, that that new leader doesn't want to extend this loan. They want their loan. So Charlie pointed out that, you know, it's probably because they need to raise capital. Now, I don't know. I don't know what the reason is. Um, but now, as I talk to you about capital, I'm in a position where I'm looking to raise a half a million dollars, right? This is a good property. Um, this is going to cash flow really well. It's in a growing area with commercial development. Um, there's also some revitalized, revitalized, vitalizing the, the other parts of the neighborhood. In fact, a young attorney, um, young now, he's probably, probably 40 years old, but he bought a series of buildings for two and a half million dollars recently, closed on it, renovating those. So it's a good growth area. It's a good investment. So now I'm in a position where I'm looking for a half a million dollar loans at something reasonable. By the way, reaching out to you, you all, if you know of any, anybody, any private investor or any kind of bank that's looking to make those loans, reach out to me. That I'm in the process of of doing the same thing I'm going to be telling you to do here uh, tonight. First mortgage, very, uh, you know, renovated building, um, good cash flow. Um, so if anyone knows, feel free to reach out. I'd be happy to pay a referral fee for an introduction or uh, talking to, to people. I'm looking for a three to five year loan, basically, to ride ride through um, ride through this and, and see what happens on the other end. Um, so, you know, it's interesting. This stuff happens to us as real estate investors. So we need to be in a position to always be looking for capital. We always, uh, you know, on our buy, renovate and sells on our on our long term holds on, and long term could be three years, five years on buying, performing and non-performing debt. We had a discussion about that this last past weekend with the live group. So there's a lot of. Um, thank you, Russell. Um, I think the Baltimore loan is called the converted takeout commitment. Okay. Fair enough. That's good. I call it a redo loan, but no, you're, you're probably hundred percent, hundred percent right. Um, 
so we need to be focusing on capital. Look, now, if you're just starting, if you're just listening to some of this and some of this is confusing, you don't know where I'm going with any of this, I'm going to back away a little bit and tell you the number one thing you need to do is find deals. That's the number one thing. Finding deals gets you paid. Finding deals, whether you're bird dogging, wholesaling, buying, renovating, selling, um, referring them to somebody, that gets you paid. Right. But as you do that, you need to be starting to focus in on raising capital. I'm going to talk about two different ways. The two best ways, in my opinion, through doing this for 25, going on probably closer to 30 years. I'm almost scared to even admit that, but probably 30 years of doing this. These are the two best ways that I have found of, of having capital that doesn't require a lot of money uh, out of your pocket. OK, but they all kind of begin. They all kind of start with finding good deals. I'll give you a quick example. If I came to you and you had $300,000 in the bank and I said, listen, I'm going to buy a house in Alexandria. All right. The value of the house is $320,000. I need to borrow $300,000. I'm willing to pay you 10%, but I need to borrow $300,000. The value now is $320,000. How many of you people would raise your hand and say, I'll make that loan? Well, of course you wouldn't make that loan, right? Because there's too much risk. You're not buying value. You're too close. If the if the borrower, if I don't pay you back, you have no recourse. You can't foreclose and get your money back. It'd cost you too much. You'd lose thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on that loan if I didn't pay. But different scenario. If I came to you and I said, I have a $320,000 house in Alexandria or wherever, District Heights, Landover, Oakton, I, wherever, we're making up numbers here. But if I came to you and said, I have a $320,000 house, okay, and I'm asking you for a $150,000 loan, now that might be more interesting, and I'm willing to pay you a nice interest rate. Now that's more interesting, right? Because if I don't pay you, in fact, some of you might pray I don't. If I don't pay you, you hire a local attorney, you foreclose, and now you own a three hundred value, $320,000 house, with a mortgage of about $150,000. There's plenty of room there, plenty of room for you to go in, make necessary repairs if needed, rent the house out, resell the house, not only get your principal back, your original loan amount, but also make some money, which is important. So that's a big difference. And that's why we can attract money because we're offering value. We're offering a good investment. Man, right now, if you had $150,000 in a house worth three hundred, dollars would you rather put that money in for a year or so and make 10% versus throwing that in at some of these at, at the stock market. Maybe, maybe you're more familiar, more comfortable with the stock market. You certainly can push a button in the stock market, but you can also lose a lot of money doing that versus having brick and block. Now, real estate can adjust, no doubt, and go up and down. Chances are it's not going to go down 50%. It could, it has, but chances are it won't. And you can still rent that house and produce cash flow and produce money coming in and you can go see that house and view that house. So my point is money is attracted to good deals, to value. That's what we are. That's what you are. If you're listening to this, you want to be a value investor. We're looking for good properties. Okay. Now, knowing that, having that premise, these are the two ways in my mind to raise the most capital. Okay in today's market. And the reason that we're focused on this, the reason we keep pounding this, because folks, it just feels like something's brewing. It just feels like, although I'm not going to predict, and I don't care what anyone tells me, it's opinions. They don't know whether we go into a recession where there's going to be some pain. We don't know. This is new. This is a new scenario. This is not a regular cycle. Okay. But it does feel like a little bit that there's going to be opportunities. There's going to be opportunities. Now, currently, the residential real estate market that most of us are in seems to be doing just fine. Why? Because there is no supply. There's no supply. You pull up these neighborhoods and there's nothing on the market or there's one or two properties on the market. I live in a neighborhood with 500 plus homes throughout a couple of communities. There's two houses on the market and they're both under contract in five or less days at great prices. Maybe not the height of the last cycle of Whenever that was, uh, spring of 2022, maybe a year ago. But man, they're trading at very high values. So that's the reason, in my opinion, that the residential, even though interest rates keep rising, there's buyer demand. And man, watch out. 
If rates came down to the mid to upper fives, I'm going to say mid fives, watch out. You would see an explosion in values in residential. Now, again, remember, residential is local here. I'm not talking about Phoenix or Boise or Austin, Texas. I'm talking about Maryland, D.C., Virginia, surrounded. All right, because we have no supply. So our residential is going great. I listed a property the other day and I got six offers and it needs work. So the buyer demand is strong. All right. So saying that these are the two best ways to raise capital for whatever kind of deal you're doing, whatever kind of deal. Number one, private money. I just shouted out. I'm looking for a half million dollars. Most likely it's going to come from a private individual or individuals. All right. Two or three, maybe. They each put in X amount of dollars secured against a mixed use commercial property or secured against a residential house in a neighborhood. First mortgage position. It's giving a nice, solid return on that capital. All right. There's people out there with money. You're looking for those folks that have money and they're out there. Small business owners, professionals, you know, blue collar workers that own a plumbing business or an air conditioning business or a barber shop or a professional that is so busy, you know, suing people as a lawyer or a medical doctor or whoever they have money or they inherited money. I'll give you an example here in a minute. Those are the folks that we are looking for. What two or three things can you focus in on in order to attract those people? Number one. Put together, a, uh, when we talked about it, an elevator or two-minute pitch. Very important. Practice it. Go in front of the mirror. Restate it in the car. Practice on your children, on your wife, your husband, your, your mate, your partner in life, whoever it is. That two-minute pitch should be exactly what you're looking for. Who you are, what you do, what you're looking for. I'm John Peterson. I buy, renovate, sell houses in Washington, D.C. Metro for the past 25 years. I'm looking for capital. I'm looking for people that have capital that want to invest short term or medium term in real estate in this area. That's what I'm looking for. So when I go to a party, I'm going to a wedding in Savannah in, in, a, in a few weeks. If I'm out on vacation like Justin is and I'm talking to some investors out there, wherever I am, if I'm in a situation, in a scenario where they say, Hey, how are you doing? Who are you? What do you do? You pitch it. You pitch it. Okay. Two minute pitch. Very important. Practice it. It's not hard. You can do that. Number two. And folks, you should be doing this even if you don't have a house yet. Even if you're brand new and you don't have a property, you will have a property. You got to prepare yourself to get that property. Or you can use someone else's property as an example. Number two, you're going to put together after you warm them up, after you have a coffee with them, after you have a phone call with them, after you go play golf or go bowling or go to a game or go to whatever, you know, an art festival, whatever you like to do, as you maybe get to know them a little bit. You know, a lot of times this is in, in a handshake and then $300,000 changes hands. This takes a minute. So start now. Then as you get a property or as you have an example of a property, OK, you put together what I call just a little investment package. It's not comp complicated. In fact, in fact, I'll make this offer. If you text me and Justin will put this up, text me. OK, or email us. You all have our email or text me. I will send you a recent one that I literally did this morning. I literally did this this morning. It's not rocket science. It's not rocket. You're putting together a picture of the property, an address of the property. You're breaking down what you're going to do with the deal. In other words, in this case, the deal I'm doing right now, it's a renovation deal. Okay. And I have a partner on it and we're doing a renovation deal. All right. And you're breaking down the renovation, not to every nail, but generally you're giving them an analysis. Some of you have heard me talk about an analysis, you know, what the house will sell for, what closing costs are, what carrying costs are, what um, insurance costs what the renovation budget is, what we paid for it, what our potential profit could be in the house. Don't be shy about that. Your investors want to see that you're making money. And if they don't, you don't want them as investors. You should be making more money than your capital investor when you're raising money like this. They're getting a secured investment at a good return. So again, if you text me or email me, I'll be happy to PDF it and send it to you. Okay. What it entails is, a, and then Backing up some of your value with a couple comparables in the neighborhood. 
Okay. A couple of listings, if there's any listings available. So this particular property is, um, is, uh, is new, is fresh. And the reason that I'm looking for a capital investor, we're always looking for capital, is that this gentleman and I, this partner and I, um, been doing some deals together. And we had uh, a meeting with an attorney. We, he's known this attorney for quite a while. I've gotten to know him a little bit over the years. And he called him up and said that his wife had inherited some money. Okay. And she was looking to invest. And would we be interested in talking about it? Of course. Ding, ding, ding. Right. Um, so again, we went down there. We we uh, we know him through professional. At least I do. This, my partner knows him certainly better than I. But we just sat across the desk, talked about a few deals, talked about what we could do, what we can't do, and um, this is a test. Meaning, this is the first opportunity we've had since that meeting. I'm putting together this little package. We're going to send it down to him. They're going to take a look at it. Now, my guess is now this is a good opportunity because this house is not that far from their offices. They can go and drive by it. Okay. It's no showpiece. You folks know the kind of houses that we buy. They, they need work. That's why we're buying them. Now, again, we're buying this house at a good, at a good price. So this little investment package is just literally showing that deal and it's going to go to them. Then they can say yes or no. I'm guessing maybe they might say no, that's okay. Sometimes it takes two or three times to get an investor comfortable and to, um, and to invest with you. If they say no, I'll keep updating them. I'll let them know how the deal went, good, bad, or ugly. Most of them go pretty well, okay? Most of them go pretty well. And then the next deal, maybe they'll bite. Or maybe they'll say, you know what? This is a good test. It's not a tremendous amount of capital. We're not talking millions of dollars. It's secured against the first mortgage. The house is around the corner from the office. We can watch you guys update it and renovate it and sell it. And we can be part of this project. And in the meantime, we'll get a nice interest rate. OK, so that information package, it's nothing special. It just gives them something to look at, something to know that that says, hey, we've thought through this and you can meet them in person if they're local, grab a cup of coffee, spend 15 minutes with them. Or if they're out of state or out of town, you can just PDF it, follow up with an email and a phone call. Say, hey, this is a deal. What do you think? Give yourself a little bit of time before you have to close in case they can't do it. You can find someone else. But raising private capital is where it's at. And man, I'm begging you. I'm pleading with you. Do it now when these opportunities start coming. In some of our emails this month, you saw car rates going up, right? Student loans are going to start being required to pay. Anybody that has an adjustable, it's going up. Credit cards are going up. All this pressure is going to start hitting consumers at some point. Now, what happens with that? Man, I'm not guessing anymore. I don't know. My guess is, though, as people get a little squeezed, right, there's going to be more opportunities. You know, people are working right now. Jobs are plentiful. People have savings coming out of the pandemic. You know, I noticed it in my own life. Man, you didn't do anything for a year, year and a half. And again, we're, we're three years removed from this, but it's still having an effect on the overall economy. So as we get out there and we start spending more money and people start buying things, you might see more opportunities in the real estate investment world. So private capital, hone in on it and really try to, to raise a little bit of capital here in the next coming months because it takes a little time. The best way to do it is go to your network, your network. All of us have a network. Go to your network. Hey, who do you know that you think might have money? You're not asking them directly. You do a simple test of, hey, this is what I'm doing. I'm looking to buy, renovate, and sell a house here in the next three to four months. And I'm looking for capital. Do you or do you know anybody that might have capital that can have a How hard is that? You could record this and repeat that. Do you or do you know anybody that might have some extra capital that are looking to invest? I'd love to have a cup of coffee with them. And if you get that appointment and you're nervous, text me, call me, call someone else. We'll walk you through it. We'll walk you through it it will get easy and you'll be able to raise money for your deals. Number two, you've heard this before. If you've tuned into me, you've certainly heard this before. Okay. But this is a classic one. This has been used over and over again throughout real estate investment from the smallest little flip deal, hundred thousand dollar flip deal to hundred million, a billion dollars. 
a billion dollar deal. So another example in San Francisco, there's another building out there that's 92% lease. The two partners have a $1.2 billion loan on it. I can't even imagine that. $1.2 billion loan and it's coming due. The building's performing, but they're going to ask the bank for an extension. It's a partnership between actually the Trump companies and I think it's uh, Goldman Sachs or another big investment bank. Okay. They're partners on a deal. And we want to talk about partners. Why don't we emulate the largest real estate investors there are in the country? Partnerships. Now, how can we raise capital with partnerships? Folks, if you don't have the money or if you don't have all the money, okay, you're going to be what we call the operations partner. You're going to be the person finding the deal, executing the deal, renovating the deal, managing the deal, renting out the deal. You are going to be that person that is on the ground, that's working that deal. You're looking for a capital partner. You're looking for somebody with money that is not going to be doing the things that you're going to be doing. It's not their job. They have another job, right? They're putting up money or they're signing their name to a bank loan. They are the capital partner. Okay. And how many deals, how many deals could you do next year, next month, next six months? If you had all the capital you needed to do real estate deals. Imagine that. Because I promise you, some of us think, man, if I had a million dollars, I'd be lighting it up. Hate to tell you, if you had a million, you need two million. If you had two million, you need five million. You got to decide where, how big and what do you want to do with your business. But my point is, is that availability of capital opens up this just wave of like, wow, I can do this. I have the money. You know, if I find a deal, I can close. That capital partner can be found now without a deal, okay, without any money. You're not required. So if that capital partner says, how much are you going to put in a deal? Your answer is what? Nothing. Zero. It's not my role. If, if, if capital partner asks me how much money I'm going to put in a deal, I say, when are you going to find me a deal? You're not because that's not your role. That's my role, Okay. Now, again, you might have a little capital put in, a little skin in the game, as they call it. But understand that your role is to find deals, find good deals, attracting that capital partner. Now, again, don't be afraid of the paperwork. You can have an attorney do a simple partnership agreement, spelling it out from A to Z for about 500 bucks. If you need that help, reach out. We'll help you. You know, one of the great things about this team at 23 that I mentioned to them, and I hope they heard it because it's so important. As we're sitting there starting out the meeting, I told them, and I truly believe this, everything that we need is right in that room. Man, we need a plumber. Somebody in that room has a plumber. If we need a foundation company, somebody knows a foundation company. If we need money, money's in that room. If we need partners, they're there. If we need contractors, they're there. If we need a property manager, they're there little picture of our little group meeting here in the house. It's a massive house. It's about 5,500 square feet. We had this big room. I asked everybody to bring their own chair uh, because I didn't want to load them all up into the car and bring them all. But that's true in your life too, in your network. It's there. It doesn't have to be you. You have to start reaching out and finding what you need in order to make this business work. And right now, right now, June of two. 2023 is a time to be raising capital. Folks, there's been a lull in the real estate market, I believe. I think the velocity in the economy is low. Man, just get the emails from all the vendors in real estate, the title companies, the radon companies, home inspection companies, realtors. A lot of those people are slow because there's not as many houses on the market. When that happens, don't sit back and say, business is over. I can't do this. Hopefully you can weather that cash flow storm if you're slow. I get it. But now is a time where you should be looking forward. What's happening? Where can I position myself? How can I take advantage of this? I see this opportunity. Where can I fit into this? What skill set do I have that I can leverage right now? So as business turns and you keep fighting, you keep working, you keep marketing, you keep making offers, you keep, you know, building your database and your network and raising capital, all the things that you need to do knowing that right now might be a little bit of slow for you. That's okay. That's all right. It's coming. 
Some of it's coming. If you keep working, it's going to come. Um, that's my strong belief. So these partnerships, all right, I've done a ton of these. I believe in them. You know, one of the great thing about partnerships is you don't have to do everything. You don't have to be responsible for everything. You do what you're good at and what you like. Find someone else to do some of those other things uh, in order for you to thrive. But how many deals could you do if you had all the money that you needed? And the money's out there, folks. They're looking for you. They want to talk to you. They want to see what kind of deals you have. Your job is to put together, uh, you know, some basic marketing material and to go find these folks. So partnerships and capital investor, you know, I could go on, I could go on for another six hours talking to you about, you know, subject twos and owner financing and all different variations of partnerships. But I don't want to do that tonight because I want to just really kind of talk to you about these two things. Let's focus on those two things in this month of June as graduations are kind of ending, as summer vacations, as Justin's in California are starting out as you know, the dog days of summer are, are coming on us. They don't feel like it because it's been 80 degrees most of summer. But it's a good time to sit back, look, watch what's happening, what's in the headlines, where's the business going, and set yourself up and position yourself up to do well as more opportunities come about. And again, I hope some of this helped. Let me read uh, a, a few of these uh, comments. Uh, Russell used to use it for pre foreclosures to get a private lender to commit. He could show the first lender they were safe because he had a commitment. Once the property was repaired, he would take out uh, the loan. So he's talking about that that takeout loan. And and the great thing about this for some of you experienced folks, you know, you can use variations of these things, right? You could use private money to acquire the property, get it renovated, get it rented and then circle back with more of an institutional investor, someone that's a little longer term, and you could take out that private money and then do it again, right? Use a private lending money again. You could use a partner for the same way, you know, maybe put together a little portfolio, or maybe put together, you know, a five, you know, five buy, renovate and sell partnership, if you will. Hey, we're going to do five of these. And then we're going to kind of sit back and look and see how we did. And maybe the splits need to be different. Maybe you need to make a little bit more. Maybe they need to make a little bit more. I don't know. That's the biggest question I get. Well, how do you split the profits and losses? Remember, there are losses. Some of my partners have always forgotten that. There are losses sometimes. Is it 50-50? Is it 60-40? I don't know. You got to come up with it. You got to come up with it with that partner. Okay. Great, great thing on the screen here. Upcoming talk, topics. You know, one of the things I love about this team of 23, and I sorry I keep coming back to this. I'm excited about this. I love this small group, you know, building, building uh, each other up and really trying to strive for our goals. And one of the things that I'm really trying to focus in on, I'm really trying to do the best of my ability is really talk to people about what they want to hear. You know, I know what I like. I know what I want to hear, uh, but I want to know what you all want to hear. I want to know topics that you guys are interested in. Is it self-directed IRA? Is it tax-free exchanges? You know, is it uh, more talk about generating leads? Is it more business structure? Is it more whatever? So again, feel free to text or email us and throw it out. Hey, I'd love to hear about X. I really want to learn more about this type of thing. Let us know. We'll put together uh, some meetings on those on those topics for you, uh, because that's what you know a RIA group or community like this is uh, is all about. So, again, I hope some of this um, was helpful. Questions? Any questions out there? It's a silent group tonight, quiet group tonight. I don't know if it's uh, that. I imagine storms came throughout the entire area. Man, I have an office, an internal office here. I heard the thunder boomers coming. Uh, through uh, Rockville, Bethesda. So I'm not sure where you folks, everyone is, but there's, uh, how about this? Let me throw out this question. Is anybody going anywhere exciting for summer vacation? Anybody? Nobody. Comments? Questions? All right. Quiet group tonight. Alex, you have usually have a good question. You have any questions for us tonight? Nothing. Quiet group. All right. Financing, partnerships, and capital. I'm making this offer to all of you. Um, I'm making this 
offer out to all of you. If any of you want this inf investment package that I use, I'm used, I created this morning. I'm sending it out uh, later on tonight, following up tomorrow. Brand new property. If any of you want it, text or email us. I'll be happy to send it to you. Charlie, are we ever going back to live meetings? Charlie, um, maybe you haven't tuned in. We are. We are live. We're live every month. It's called the Team of 23. Um, uh, great group. Um, and um, yeah, we are live and uh, I'm excited. It's great to see. I saw a few people the other day that I haven't seen in two and a half years. It was wonderful. Yeah, we're on our second meeting. We started in May, June and and uh, we're, we're going live every every single month and a little bit different concept than um, than we did. Um, what's a vacation? All right. Um, <laughs> we'll, we'll address that in a minute. Um, but so, yeah, it's called the team of 23. So we are live once once a month. We're going out live with a with a small group. Uh, Cindy, what's a vacation? Hmm. That's not good. Um, we gotta, we gotta free up some, uh, free up some time for you to, to get away. You know what to, uh, Alex, I'll answer that question here in a minute. Speaking of vacation, um, I know a lot of you are slammed. I mean, some of you might have kids or a lot of commitments or, um, maybe the cash flow isn't as great as you want. You can't really see yourself going away for a week to 10 days or, or whatever your vacation is. But I do encourage you to try to get away for a minute, even if it's a day or two, um, you know, I never took much vacation, certainly as, as a kid. Uh, I learned that it's important to get away, um, to get away, quiet place, take a hike, do an overnight camping trip, go to the beach for a day. Just get out of your routine. Get out of the area if you can. And that can just mean an hour away. You can go up to Harper's Ferry or you can go to the Eastern Shore. You can go to, you know, uh, one of the beaches in Delaware or go up to the mountains of Shenandoah for a day or two. All of us most likely can find that. Now, again, I know people have pets, they have kids, they have commitments, uh, they have work. But man, getting away for a few days is really important. It will really help you get centered and really get you kind of refreshed and really willing to, you know, kind of work a little bit more efficiently, a little better if you can get away. So if at all possible, I would do that. And um, if there's an obstacle, figure it out. Figure out what that obstacle is. Certainly don't go charge everything, you know, on a European vacation on a credit card. So you're in debt. But there's got to be a way you can get away for, for a little bit of time. Um, let's see. Uh, Alex, uh, are banks still giving lines of credit on rented property, home money lines of credit? Um, Alex, uh, you know, they, they are. I mean, it, it just, you know, it depends on, you know, they're not as freewheeling. It's going to be more expensive and they'll probably be a little more, uh, you know, you got to provide a few more things, but banks are still lending. I had a lunch with a, with a banker the other day, uh, United Bank, and, um, you know, they're they're out looking for for business and loans. I mean, they're not as aggressive. Right. And they won't stretch as much. But sure, there's there's bankers out there that will will uh, will do some do some loans. And again, you can go to the private market if that's not working. Um, previous Sun Eagle Bank, Sandy Spring haven't had much success with it of late. Yeah. I mean cautious right now. There's, there's, there's no doubt, but keep knocking on the door, keep talking to them, find out their requirements, right? Maybe it's a higher credit rating now. Maybe it's a little bit more equity. Um, so, you know, we got to do, uh, we got to do some of those. Um, we got to keep knocking on those doors, but there's no doubt. And that's my point, Alex, the banks are going to be tighter. The, the flow of capital is going to be tighter. But where the flow of capital is not as tight is in the private market, right? Private people still want to invest their money. Private people don't want to just stick it in, in, the, in the stock market or maybe stick it in a bank account, even though they get a higher rate of return right now than they have in years and years. They're still looking for opportunities and investment properties. So that's why I say now might be the time to let's pause on the banks, banging our head up against the wall and go more to the private market and work that angle and try to find people with capital that are willing to do some deals with us to walk us through this time, whatever that time frame is, we don't know, but the banks will get tighter. And I think that will be coming. And that's why I say other forms of raising capital, like owner financing, like subject twos, like um, maybe wholesale a deal or two, um, you know, they're, they're going to be more prevalent as we, uh, as we go fa farther. Dominic, is it wise to try a different style of property investments other than the ones that you are used to doing? Um, sure. That's a great, that's a great question. So you're just expanding yourself, um, expanding your, your, uh, 
ability to do different types of deals. So in other words, if you're buy, renovating and selling and the market's tight right now and you're not finding anything that makes sense, um, maybe you go to a different, maybe you look for a rental property now. Maybe that's the, that's the game in town. Or maybe you do something completely different. Maybe you learn how to buy and sell land or you do a note deal or you look for uh, you know, distress, distress, uh, distress notes, you know, as a market tighter and banks get a little tighter, maybe it's time to do what uh, some other people are doing and dial up some mid-level banks, credit unions, find out if they have any distressed asset they're looking to sell, get on the private market, start calling people that have taken back notes in the last three to five years. We talked about that at the live meeting, um, buying some judgments. I mean, there's so many different ways we can go. What I don't want you to do is get so scattered that, you're just not doing anything and you're not making any money. Um, but certainly expanding your geography, expanding your strategy, expanding some different things is, uh, is fine. Russell, once you to use your rental income, flip income, et cetera, an account and ask for a compensating, compensating balance loan from a commercial bank, MIT bank will do this and other smaller banks. Okay. Again, and you see some of the knowledge in this because you see the experienced investors have been through some markets. All right. Uh, compensating balance means you have to leave a minimum amount in the checking account and it's tied to the business loan. Okay. So it's more of a secure loan against cash flow. So your loan probably against the property too. Um, so again, those are some of the things that we might have to give up in order to get capital. Capital's lifeblood, right? We all need it. We all need it, it to keep our businesses moving and to, uh, to keep going. I'm headed to the beaches in Florida next month and then to North Carolina beaches. Of course, I'm doing deals. It's a business trip. Great. That's great. Enjoy those. Enjoy those. Uh, enjoy those beaches. Watch out for those those sharks in Florida and North Carolina. Uh, but no, enjoy. Enjoy. Uh, enjoy that time. Julius Jenkins. Great. Any recommended layers for uh, add DSCR loans or focus on private on the private investors? You know, I don't. Um, I don't. If you if you text me, Julius, or or email me, we'll put that up. Um, I'd be happy to maybe give you a recommend to. I don't feel comfortable with some of those some of those lenders that I've uh, I've used. I'm definitely more of a private guy. I would definitely go more for the private funds. Um, what he's talking about are the DSCR loans. I mean, uh, you know, they they claim that you know it's more on the cash flow, more on the equity. Um, part of it. Uh, I know some members in Washington area have used them, um, different ones. A lot of them will come out of California, you know, um, some of them, I guess are local. Um, I think you maybe just pick one and go through the process and see, see what happens. Look at their reviews online, uh, try to get a sense of, you know, if they get back to you or what's the speed of the loan. Um, I find them very cumbersome and slow, even though they're not supposed to be, um, to work, but you know, every time I've gone that route, I've always bumped into a private person um, after I've worked with bigger banks on uh, some commercial stuff and, and so forth. And after I get through with a private person, meaning we negotiate terms and everything, it comes out almost even better than the DSCR. Or if I'm paying a slightly more, it's just the ease of transaction and just the headache. It's not, not worth the extra little, little bump that I might have to pay a private person. So, um, but, but great question. And, um, uh, we'll try to help you out with, uh, that I got to give that a little more, a little more thought, but I'm definitely more tending toward the private investor, uh, realm. If anyone has any suggestions, throw it up on the screen. Um, if you want to text or email me, I'll try to give that a little more thought for you. Um, that's great. Um, that's great. Great comments there. We appreciate it. And, uh, you know, as we go forward on some of these things, um, don't be shy. You know, if you need some help, um, I do some private mentoring. I know I'm throwing a lot of things out here. I do some private mentoring. Um, happy to give free advice. Happy to help you out any way I can. All right, Russell, I agree with John. Get lines of credit where you only pay when you draw out the loan. You can qualify with a 680 credit score and get 1500K credit lines. It's taking longer to get. Yeah, many of the banks would give you what they call signature loans based on your credit. They're pulling back on some of those things. They And, and they always do. It's just the it's just the real estate cycle when things are flowing and everybody's making money and the values are going skyrocket and the banks are trying to get you in with secured loans. As things get tighter as they're getting more nervous. And remember, their volume of business is down, too. There's not a lot. There's none. Basically, refinances out there. Um, some of these uh, mortgage loan companies are going out of business. Some are laying off people um, because this velocity of the business is, is way down. 
Um, but you know, this is a, I'm going to end on this. There, this is an interesting market for us. If you can get your hands on properties, you can make some serious money. I've been surprised at some of the offers that I'm getting and they're getting the closing. They're getting closing. Some of you know that I'm a big advocate right now and I have for the last two and a half, three years of hybrid, hybrid, what I call hybrid wholesale. If you will, I'm buying the property. I'm doing no work or a little bit of work and I'm putting it back on, on the public market and I'm seeing if I can find a handyman or if someone wants to build a little sweat equity, I'm having luck with that. And if I don't, if no one bites at the price that I need, I turn around and take it off the market and we go in with the renovation team and do a renovation. But I'm finding the market right now, there's a lot of people looking for value. Okay. They're looking for value and they're willing to do a little bit of the work as long as the house isn't completely trashed. Now, this isn't going to work if the house needs everything and you can't live in the house. But if you can live in the home and it hasn't been out to the public markets yet, you might be able to uh, make some pretty good money uh, doing that. Alex, with low supply, wholesale has become very attractive. Just flipped the condo in Hyattsville and made 40K. Purchased at 55K, signed a contract at 95. ARV is 140, potential rent 1500. Exactly what I'm talking about. Alex, just that's the deal. That's the deal. That's the deal that's going to work in the next two or three years. Okay. And uh, Alex, maybe you truly wholesale that. Maybe you didn't. Um, maybe you just did an assignment. That's great. Um, I actually, you know, buy some of mine because it gives me more flexibility and more exposure to the market. Um, but that's exactly what I'm talking about. $40,000 on a $55,000 purchase. Ain't bad day work, right? More money than a lot of people make in a year. It's exactly what we're talking about because the supply is low. There's buyers out there. There's handymen out there. There's homeowners out there um, and, and they want value and they want perceived value, even if the house needs a little bit of work. They're willing to do that. And if they're keeping it as a rental or they're moving into it, they're not like an investor that needs a big spread. That's where a great market is. And that's the exact model that I've been uh, I've been using for really the last couple of years. Now, not all of them work. I would close that deal. I would do a little bit of work and either keep it out as a rental and or uh, and or sell it once we're done with renovation. So it gives you flexibility in the deal. But thanks, Alex, for that. That's uh that's that's tremendous. All right, folks. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope this was helpful. Let me know if I can send you out that investment package. If we can help with anything, let us know about topics in the future. Enjoy uh, this time of year. It is a great time of year. The kids are out of school. Everyone's enjoying the summer and uh, we'll be uh, we'll be back with you uh, in July. And uh, thanks so much for taking a little bit of time and uh, joining us. Charlie, great to hear from you. Love to catch up with you outside of this meeting. Um, take care and we'll, uh, we'll talk to you soon. Justin, enjoy California.